my internship experience the season has been really stressful suppose you belong to a tier 2 or tier 3 college then you need to apply off campus also so if you are applying for off campus then so a lot of the theory which i learned there and in fact it actually did help in my interview so yes the, one of the only advice i'll give to anyone who wants to get into this is to Please introduce us. Let us all know about your name. So my name is Paimu Manti. I am Aditya Nil Pulikotil. My name is Shravya. My name is Kumar Snehal. So how did you prepare for this internship application? My internship experience the season has been really stressful but at the end it was all worth it. I had a good hold uh, I was doing DSS since my second semester and then I had started with CP in my second year but then the actual uh, grinding started during my vacations uh, after second year. I started preparing accordingly after i got some experience from few companies for the application well uh, since it's on campus so there was no difficulty but i did take help from a few seniors and uh, my friends in order to polish my resume uh, because uh, well even though like it's an on campus experience uh, the resume is not very very important as an off campus but it has to be decent right so like uh, that helped well depends actually from student to student suppose if you are preparing an internship at any mncs company then mostly you have to practice dsa because DSA is one of their most filtering filtering criteria. But apart from DSA, they also ask you CS fundamentals like OOPs, DBMS, CN. So yeah, I have a current standing offer from DSA for a technology development intern. Like that was the first company that came to campus, and like that is where I applied to first. The internship season and the interview process was really great. We had like one first round of online test. Second, then we had a first round of interviews, which was on a hybrid mode. Like we had two panels who were doing it offline and two panels who were taking it online. I had my first round online, and second round was completely offline. Yeah, mostly for the software side and the technology development side of things, we'll most likely will be focusing on uh, DSA and bit of compute uh, competitive programming as well. And you should also focus on slight bit of computer fundamentals as well. That that most likely will cover everything. Uh, and uh, are there any resources or platform that you had used? So for DSA. I mostly followed Raj Vikram Aditya sheets, the famous okay. driver sheet, and I practiced questions from Lead Code mostly and GFG, and from other CS fundamentals like OS, DBMS. I uh, studied from GFG articles; so those are very good. There is competitive coding platforms, all that that helps a lot to clear OTs and even the technical interviews to have the efficiency in that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess my coursework as well, uh, since my coursework of the second year was entirely uh, algorithms and uh, data structures only. So a lot of the theory which I learned there, and in fact, it actually did help in my interviews. So. Oh, yes the theory and the practice they both help from uh, the so, two places gfg has their own sheets for like graphs and dpm stuff that like follow those that will be more than enough and like look through more like fundamental stuff like like a little bit of uh, introduction to os introduction to dbms do a little bit of oops make projects and stuff that should cover you up for uh, gfg i have practiced some questions and for any stl help that i needed and for uh, computer fundamentals i used gfg Okay, great. We will use this in our marketing. <laughs> Do you think resume or portfolio is a deciding factor in internship and all? For an on-campus uh, resume does not matter, but it is good to have a good resume just in case. Uh, I can say for on-campus, it's that like your portfolio, like the projects and all, they, like they do matter. Yeah, like if you have project, it's a good thing. Like at least you have done something. But uh, the main thing is that the CG cutoff criteria, which is there for uh, the resume shortlisting. But if you mention anything in your resume, for example, any project you have done, for example, say you have done an app development project, or you have done a Java project, or you have done a Python ML project. If you have written that, then expect that they can ask it to you, and then you need to know it full. You need to be able to answer to them like, yes, I have done it, and you can explain yourself over there. For on-campus interns and the on-campus drive, most probably, like there are companies which do come and like shortlist. based on resume as well but that plays a small part in the whole process of getting interns and placements but for off campus yeah like you'll have to put an in effort into your resume yeah it does suppose if you come from a tier 1 college then most good companies come to your campus suppose you belong to a tier 2 or tier 3 college then you need to apply off campus also so if you are applying for off campus then resume does matter a lot so you need to have a good ats score uh, from your resume so for that try building good projects and try doing good developments in your first year second year itself and apart from that try to have some prior internship experience because that will play a major role when you apply for any uh, good company okay so can you share some experiences about your interview process or rounds i will be doing my internship in rippling it was completely offline 
so uh, there was an online assessment test through which they had shortlisted few candidates and after that we had two interview rounds uh, which were completely offline uh, the first one was a coding round and the second one was a, a cs fundamentals and a hr round so they were, they were shortlisting at, at every step so after the first round they were shortlisting and after the second uh, they gave the final results they expected like that was even shared in their uh, pre internship that uh, session which they had uh, that you need to be able to explain your code in your interview like whatever you're writing you should explain it the complexities in the theoretical part also you need to know uh, i don't know if i can share the whole thing but i'll give you a point like my first round was completely online it was hosted on hacker rank generally companies some companies do host it on their own platforms as well it had one sort of a design type of problem and one a generic array based dsa problem and the second round was offline completely it was a pen paper round basically and they were they keep kept asking me questions the questions came from a varied set of like the set of questions like i had three dsa problems covering like trees graphs tp as well as arrays then i was asked oops i was asked about projects also i had a previous intern like for this summer as well so they asked me about that project and yeah that was it okay so what were some of your good projects that you would like to mention one of the projects was i did a research intern in the summer of my second year so that was one of my projects and two of my projects were from the interity technique one was given by adobe and one was given by zelta labs my resume had three projects uh, one was based on ml uh, stock prediction using lstm model and another uh, was basic uh, data analysis and uh, the third one was a dsa based project which was basically related to linked lists like i have not done many projects uh, like good projects as of now i've done very basic basic ones like bottom line ones and one was a course project only so yeah i didn't have good projects do you think you could have done something differently if you have to start over yes like i started a proper preparation after some good companies left so i would have started preparing uh, better in a better way earlier by interacting with my peers more and understanding where to focus better i guess competitive programming starting at the four, i started at fourth sem so maybe starting a little bit early like everyone else started at the start of second year and some people have been doing since the pds course itself so that does help and maybe learning a few other skills like although in this uh, internship other skills and other languages was not as mandatory as dsa knowledge but i guess learning a few other skill does not uh, like cause any issues like that is something beneficial to know uh, yeah definitely uh, suppose if i if i'm back in my first year then i would have definitely started doing cp because nowadays most of the companies have conduct ot like cp based only they have a stipulated time period and have to solve two to three questions and the questions are mostly cp based so i guess if you want to clear ot of any mang company or any good company then you need to do a good amount of cp so i guess if i'm back in my first year i would do i would start cp from my first year onwards and also do development side by side and participate in contest each week so one of the only advice i'll give to anyone who wants to get into this is to like diligently keep practicing dsa and competitive programming questions and like keep following your passion wherever development side comes into as well don't leave one thing for the other maintain a balance okay so is there any strategy you want to share with all of the freshers and like there any of your juniors or peer group basically have a good resume do good development and make sure your projects the projects that you do stand out from others and apart from that do good dsa and cp and you should be good to go you should be able to crack any company like get into a group which has sort of a similar mentality when it comes to yourself they will keep pushing you towards like you'll all grow together in that group like even when someone is following something they'll share it with you you will share it with others you'll keep at explaining problems and solving together that lets you grow a lot faster than you doing it alone have a healthy balance between uh, doing preparation for coding your coursework as well as your non academic life like the people i know who have gotten internships they have not been entirely dedicated to i must code daily like they have been doing their academics they have been doing this the technical skills develop they have been developing the technical skills they have also been doing stuff here and there in the campus so it's like try to have a nice balance because this balance in turn helps you uh, to have a healthy approach towards competitive like you get tired out of competitive programming daily 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 so yeah have a healthy balance between your uh, life that also goes a long way okay okay thanks a lot yeah, yeah.